Hi, this is Glenn Gallucci and I'm back again with Gerald Lucas. Uh, we're both full-time real estate investors and we'd just like to go over another short video on analyzing a real estate deal. We covered that a little bit in the first one, but I would just like to now go over what I think is the key to analyzing every, every deal. And I've said this to my students, I do it at the seminars and workshop, and it's the selling price. We call it the after repaired value, which is commonly known as the ARV, after repaired value. And that means, what is the house going to be worth after it's repaired? We know what we may be buying it at, but what are we going to be selling it at? And how do we arrive at that price? So I, I just know that that is the key to any real estate deal that you are considering. I mean, do you do that with the? I mean, I do that with the with the foreclosures and the and the bank owned properties. Do you do that with? with short Absolutely. Sales? I mean, it's it's probably the most fundamental thing that you have to do as an investor is to figure out what is the the property that you're looking at. What's it worth? What's the value of it? Um, do you use realtors normally to come up with the air? That's a great way. In fact, when we talk when we talk about our team members, we're going to discuss how to use realtors effectively. And yes, you would go to the realtors and they'll give you a comparative market analysis. They're going to tell you what similar houses sold. I guess it's the same way with the short sales. You Absolutely. have to do the same process. Same thing. What you know, other houses, if they have three bedroom, one and a half bath, what have they sold for? The size of the properties are the same and everything else. We want to know if that house is going to sell for $280,000, that's where we're starting at. And then from there, what I do is we start putting in all the expenses, all the renovation costs, and everything that's associated with owning that property, getting it ready for a resale. Holding that, costs too, right? Exactly, oh, exactly, which a lot of people forget. You know, you still pay real estate taxes on these properties. Um, you still you have the utilities that you have to pay, lawn maintenance, if insurance. It's insurance. If it's the winter, we, we have snow that has to be shoveled. So we factor all that in, and that's how you arrive at your offer. And that's how I do it when I'm buying the bank properties. We have to know what all those expenses are to come out with our offer price. And it makes a lot of sense too because with the ARV also because you want to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. So you want to make sure that if you're looking at a three bedroom, uh, one bathroom house, you're not comparing the price to you know a five bedroom, uh, two bathroom house. Even sometimes with whether it's a one to two bath, you'll be surprised how that value will change. Now that extra bathroom is, is much more valuable uh, in, in houses. So again, you're looking at what your retail buyers are paying for those, which you can get right from your realtor. Okay, they'll be able to tell you that, and that's why later when we talk about them being such an important person to be on your team. Sure. So, what about um, some of the exit strategies that we have for these houses? I mean, how do you, what do you look to do when you're getting these short sales? Well, normally, you know, I'm going to either try to um, buy the property and, and, and rehab it and then resell it, or I may want to keep it because I am a landlord and, and I have been really since I, I started investing in real estate. Um, so it really, it, it depends. And I think that, um, do you often find that, depending on the exit strategy that you use, do you make different kinds of offers? Oh, great. That's, that's a great question. And yes, uh, if, if I'm looking to take this property, renovate it, and sell it, I'm going to be using a certain formula. But if I'm going to hold this property and I'm going to rent it and keep it as a rental property, mm -hmm. I can actually pay, I can pay more than my formula, which we'll discuss later on, will allow me to pay. So like say I'm looking to buy the property, renovate it, and sell it, and Gerald wants to buy it, even renovate it, and keep it as a rental property, Gerald can pay more than I can pay because he's still getting the property at a discount, but he doesn't have to worry about selling it to making a huge profit on it. Um, what he will do is, it'll, when he buys them at a discount, his, and he's going to have rental income coming in, it's going to lower his mortgage on the property because he's buying it at such a reduced rate. So you're exactly right. It's a, it's a different different formula that we use. So you want to figure out, you want to work your way backwards and figure out what you want to do at the end, what your exit strategy is. How do you normally um, get the money to buy these properties? Oh, uh, I think we may save that for our next video because <laughs> we have we have hard money lenders, we have private lenders, and I'll answer some of the questions which Gerald also knows about do we use banks and if we do, how do we use them? So why don't we save that one for our next video because well, I'd like to give them a little bit more information on that. And I know we've both used all those variations as well. Absolutely. All so right, we'll save it. Save it for the next one. Okay, we'll see you guys soon. See you next time.